Holidays, folks. So, we decided to do a video today, um, as in we, I meant I, uh, about retro collecting on a budget. So, with the holidays around and spending money on all kinds of different things, whether it be Black Friday, your kids, your wife, yourself, well, maybe not so much yourself, but, but yeah, this is what we're going to talk about here in this video. Um, so, I've had people in the past ask me too, uh, how do you have three kids, you know, a mortgage, a stay-at-home wife, who stays home with kids and everything like that, and still be able to look forward to pick up games and stuff like that. Well, I'm going to go over some tips, like I said, um, and we'll just kind of, you know, pick and choose what you want, and if you like them, use them, if not, you know what, you don't have to. But, uh, yeah, go ahead and comment below which ones you really like and we're gonna start this video right now so guys uh... yeah so we're gonna go over the first tip um, one of the first things I always tell people too is especially if you're on a budget uh, first plan out your budget don't just start buying willy-nilly if you can only afford certain things a month uh... figure out exactly what you can afford and stick to that uh, there's been times in the past where I've just gone and seen everything and just started buying and buying and buying. And the next thing I know, uh, some bills came around and stuff like that and we were cutting it pretty close. And it was just because of with my addictive personality and with some of the other stuff was I saw good deals and I was like, I can't pass these up and I just started buying it. Uh, and all that does then is bring stress to you and your family and stuff later on is yes you had the game yes you had the coolest stuff but what what's the point of having it if you're so worried about making you know choices later on financially so I would always recommend getting a budget and staying to that budget and if the good stuff pops up yeah we'll go over some other tips for if the good stuff pops up and you run out of money that time so uh, going on with that budget setting up uh, don't just buy the first thing you see uh, I've done this in the past where I've had I've seen a bunch of stuff pop up and I just went out and bought them. This was like okay I'll get these okay I'll get that and then and it was something I wouldn't really extremely wanted you know like it was just kind of something that looked cool or stuff like that so I kind of wasted the money on it and regretted it because there was times when I blew my budget right away in the beginning of the month and stuff like that and something I really wanted like a Sega Saturn and I, I don't have a Sega Saturn yet. And I seen one pop up one time on Facebook, really, really cheap, like 40 bucks. And I spent all my money that month in the first week and I could not pick up the Saturn. And you know what I did? I ended up just picking up some minuscule games that were shell fillers that weren't even that important. I mean, and like I said, I really wanted that Saturn. So it was just, it wasn't good. So like I said, I would not, I wouldn't recommend just buying everything you see right away. Even if it seems like a pretty good deal, because like I said, later on that month or something, or even the next day, you might see something that you actually really, really, really wanted, and no go. And then that would go back to the first thing I said about in this video was, you know, don't go over your budget, because then you'll just be like, well, then I have to buy this, this is such a good deal. But like I said, uh, I wouldn't do that. Especially if you're trying to save money. Um, this is a big one that everybody should know but if you can if possible bundle don't buy single games um, if you're on a budget because all you're doing is spending extra money in shipping spending you know and that's a big thing especially if you're buying online um, because that's what a lot of what I do is because like I said I live in a small town I can't I don't have anything around here I don't have game stores or anything I can go visit or stuff or big nice goodwills and stuff like that so always bundle uh, yeah like specifically I know on Macari and stuff like that I always see like people selling one game for like retail prices with shipping and you know I know it might be a game you really want but if you stick around sometimes and look sometimes you'll see that game plus a couple other games 
for just a little bit more and free shipping. I've seen that happen before where there was, I wanted a Mega Man game. I think it was Mega Man 3. I ended up spending about $20 because I bought it and it was in not very good shape because of, and I ended up spending about $16 on it and then $4 in shipping and then you know what happened? I seen another deal pop up later on with Mega Man. I think it was two and three. Someone only wanted thirty dollars, and for, and it was three shipping. So I could have just easily spent the extra ten bucks on my budget, and got that instead. So, uh, now this is one of the tips I was talking about to go with uh, earlier. If you do happen to run out of your budget, uh, instead of just keep spending and spending and spending, see if it is possible to just trade. Now I sometimes, like I said, when I bundle items and stuff like that, I will sometimes pick up doubles because there is people out there that may want them that you can use to trade later on. I have a buddy that you know around here that clicks too, and uh, if he's got fillers I need, and I've got fillers he needs, then sometimes we just kind of trade them back and forth and just, yeah, that's I mean that's the cheapest way possible. I mean sometimes. Nobody likes to get doubles, and I used to not get doubles because I didn't want to spend the extra money on something I already had. But there was a few bundles that would pop up that would have the doubles I already had, but it'd be such a good deal for other stuff that I could keep from my collection that I ended up selling the doubles and almost getting my money back. And I know YouTubers like Wrestle Rick and stuff like that, that's how he got his collection, like CJR. That's how they got their whole collection was, you know, buying doubles of everything and then reselling and then getting their money back. So some of those guys have collections I haven't even technically paid for because of that same purpose you know they have it is resold it all so if it comes down to a trade if possible and if you have to do it too you have those doubles and like I said you have those doubles that you can just sell then or go through your collection and find stuff that's not very important to you that you bought on a limb sometime and then you just like why do I have this is just taking up room like I had a PlayStation 1 f flight joystick which was huge and it was just sitting there and it was just taking up space and I wasn't gonna play it and then I had a buddy who was interested in it and I said well 10 bucks you know it's just sitting there too so then he paid me and then I used that 10 bucks and got a game I actually wanted to play so that's another one you can go with uh, a, a big one a real big one um, research prices uh, use websites like price charting and stuff like that make sure that you're actually paying around what it's worth you don't know how many times I've gone on to sites uh, and people on Facebook even they do not know the value of something and just throw a number out there uh, somebody had a I know locally here they had just a regular Nintendo with Mario and they were asking over a hundred dollars for it just because you know it's Nintendo and it's old and stuff like that and you know what happened Somebody was actually, a couple people were actually asking about it. I'm pretty sure it sold for over $100, and all it was was a regular Nintendo with Mario. That's not good. And especially if you're on a budget and stuff like that. That's, no. So, and you don't want to be the jerk that goes on there and posts comments saying that, hey, you know, this isn't, that's not how much it's worth. It's worth way less than that. You know, Try and stay out of that because I've seen people do stuff like that too, and then it just becomes a big Facebook problem or whatever problem, and then there's just posts everywhere and stuff like that. So, research prices. I know, especially with online shopping, um, even if you see something you you know think is a good deal, and you get scared about the, oh is this good idea, still look it up to make sure that it is. Don't just go on a limb and buy it because I've done that too where I thought it was a rare NES game because there was two different variations of that game. And I thought it was the rare one, and I went and spent a little too much on it, and found out later on that it was a common one. So that, that's what I'm saying about researching them, because otherwise you'll spend way too much money. Somebody will just put in the comments, I think this is the rare one, and then you'll be like, oh, I think it's the rare one too, and then buy it, and no, that doesn't work very good. Uh, oh, yeah, this was one, I didn't even write this one on the list, but I just remember this one. Uh, I have the magazines actually sitting right there. Um, sourcing. Uh, you wouldn't believe how many coworkers, friends, friends of friends, Facebook friends have retro games and stuff sitting in a box in the basement that they don't even want. Um, it's happened a few times now. I've made comments about it or they see me at work looking up games and stuff like that. Um, specifically, if you've watched a video in the past, video, if you watched a video in the past, we had a, 
I had a coworker who had a stack of Nintendo Powers, and I got a couple of them right here. But he, uh, yeah, he was going to toss them out in junk days. So here we have junk days twice a year where if you don't know, go through your house and whatever you don't want, you just throw on the curb. People can come around. And if they want it, you know, another person's, some person's junk might be someone else's treasure. You know, you can just pick it up. And I picked up shelves and stuff like some of these shelves behind me holding my games. I picked those up on a curb and they were fine. They just, somebody didn't have room for them and got rid of them. But anyway, so going on with the tip. He oversaw that and he said, hey, I've got a bunch of old gaming magazines. Would you be interested in it? Now, when I saw that, I always thought he was talking about like Game Informer and stuff like that. And I said, but either way, you know, I like old magazines, whether it be putting it in the bathroom, you know, <laughs> reading them then or just having them in general around here as decoration and just picking one up every once in a while and looking through them. Well, then he said uh, he dropped it off in my car at work and I got off work and I went out there and I looked at it and I went to pick this box up and it was heavy as hell. Like very heavy and I was like my eyes just lit up and I was like oh man oh man oh man oh man so I opened it up and there had been like there had to been about 30 to 40 Nintendo powers in there and he even told me he said I, I looked them up I know they're all about probably anywhere from seven to fifteen dollars a piece so you know but I don't want to take the time to I don't want to take the time to have to sell them so you know here you go man and he said he even said too that he's like I have a, Ninten a Super Nintendo with a bunch of games somewhere but I recently just moved, so I'm gonna have to look through and see if I can find that, and I'll just give that to you too. And you know, and it works both ways, because he said that, he hooked me up with these, and then later down the road, I had an extra 360, and as he said, his boy really wanted one, so I returned the favor, guys. You know, I gave him an Xbox 360 with some games and some controllers for his boy, and he was overjoyed, his boy was overjoyed, and it worked out very good in the end, you guys. So you know what, and then right there too, I live on the fact that sometimes getting, you know, karma with hunting goes a long way. If you got something you don't need and somebody else ha wants it, you know, sometimes karma, man. I've, I've, I've hooked some people up before, just gave them stuff and been like, here, you need this. Uh, they really liked it and stuff like that. And you know what happens? I swear, sometimes, guys, I swear, next day, all of a sudden, I'll just see something pop up on Facebook, or we'll go to Goodwill, and I'll get a stack of games or something like that, pretty cheap, and, you know, it's always good to give, too, because even if you don't get something, or karma doesn't affect you, or anything like that, um, you know what, it always feels good to give, and a lot, I've heard this one time at a charity meeting at work, uh, give till it feels good. Alright, guys, I think I just have... Let's see. Yep, we just got one more tip to go over. So, this is a big one, especially if you're on a budget. Um, pick a system, pick some kind of subject, pick anything in general, and just focus on collecting for that. I know I first started and I tried picking up every system because if I wanted that reason, if I saw a game pop up for a good price, I wanted to have that system so I could buy that game so I could play it only problem that happened with that was I bought the you know I bought that stuff and then whenever I saw deals popping up for those systems I would just blow it you know blow the money on it and stuff like that because I didn't think that uh, you know I just wanted the games I just wanted the games I didn't you know and later on I had all these games for all these systems that I didn't even want to play and you know I as a collector and stuff like that that's alright but as also a gamer themselves uh, you know, picking up, picking up Wii games. Uh, not specifically, I don't think I had that, but there was like a Cars one. Uh, actually, I think I do have a GameCube game somewhere that was a Jimmy Neutron game, and I only picked it up because I saw it there for sale. But I focused in the beginning on my Nintendo collection. I know you can't see it very well um, because I have a lot of nostalgia feeling uh, for Nintendo. Um, no, I didn't, not as much as many anybody else, uh, because I was born in 87, so I kind of caught the tail end of the, the NES, and actually I had most nostalgic feeling for Sega, because I had a Sega Genesis at that, you know, young age, um, and that was really huge for me, and you know, after that PlayStation and stuff like that, but I wanted to play all these old Nintendo games, and as a kid, I couldn't play because we couldn't afford them. Uh, couldn't rent them and they just didn't pop up so I started focusing on Nintendo 
which was awesome because then I could find bundle deals on Macari and stuff like that. And unfortunately, it is a system that's hard for me to find locally. So if they do pop up on Facebook, occasionally I'll try and jump on it. Um, and when that happens, sometimes I might pay a little bit over. But, you know, sometimes just hunting locally too is a lot more fun than doing it online because doing it online sometimes gets really old and it's not as fun. But going, you know, I'm kind of going off track here, but focus on a system that you really like um, or, sub, or subject matter. I know a lot of people like collect specifically horror games. Um, uh, Retro Obsessed, he really likes Madden. So what he has been trying to do is collect all the Madden games. And so, yeah, check him out, too, if you want to watch uh, videos on, uh, yeah, just pick up same. He does a lot of the same stuff I do, but he also runs an eBay store, so you can kind of see how he runs a store, how he flips and sells stuff, too. So go ahead and check him out. So, well, guys, we've been going on for about 15 minutes. I kind of, all the tips I had written down, all the stuff I could think of the other day, we kind of went over, um, my biggest one I can give to you guys, you know, is obviously don't go out of means. Don't spend too much money. Budget. Um, and remember, too, that the games are for playing and for having fun. Don't get too caught up in the collecting aspect of it. And just, you know, just remember to sit down sometime and actually play them. Because <laughs> uh, I can't think of, oh, it was an episode of Friends when uh, Phoebe was horrified that Joey and them were throwing Christmas trees and stuff and selling Christmas trees and stuff like that and she was like you're just cutting them and killing them and stuff like that but you know that is the Christmas tree's purpose he wants to serve his purpose these games want to be played so do it thanks for watching guys if you haven't please subscribe please leave a like please leave a dislike if you didn't like it I'm all up for constructive criticism and comment below what you thought of these tips and some of your tips, if you have any that I missed. I really appreciate you guys, and as always, stay retro, friends.